Welcome to Watch Mojo, and today we're counting down our picks for the top 10 Blumhouse horror movies. You need to return him to us. Alive. So we may purge as we are entitled. For this list, we're taking a look at the best horror films to come out of Blumhouse Productions, including co-productions as well as those produced by Jason Blum. Have you seen any of these frightening flicks? Which one was your favourite? Share your thoughts with us down in the comments. Number 10. Hush. <laughs> How does one survive being hunted when they cannot hear or call for help? That's a key component of the terror in Hush. A young woman who lost her hearing and voice from bacterial meningitis finds herself trapped in her home in the woods as a killer lurks around outside. Can you read my lips? Very few words are spoken throughout this film, making every moment more tense than the last. It'll constantly keep you guessing how Kate Siegel's character will escape, if at all, while coming up with the unique scenarios under its already strict rule set. Clever and cunning in every way possible, Hush is a must-watch for those who love slashers, thrillers, and home invasion horror. Number 9. Cam Shit, sorry. Oh, uh, Katie! Alice, hey. I did not know you worked here. During one of her shows, a cam girl fakes her own death in an effort to become one of the top stars on her platform. Things take a turn for the worse when someone starts using her account and likeness for their own devious agenda. Oh, I think I got bubbles in my eye. Ah! Can you go blind from bubbles? On top of providing a glimpse into the dangers that cam girls and sex workers can face in the modern age, cam also sheds light on a vicious cycle present these days, the desperate clamour for fame. Madeline Brewer delivers a fantastic performance as protagonist Alice Ackerman, and will make your heart break as you witness her downward spiral. Oh, you're so adorable. Stop it. I was so awkward. So I was so awkward. Hot. Number 8. Paranormal Activity While the found footage subgenre has arguably become increasingly tiring over the years, the Paranormal Activity film series still remains as one of the few that does it best. In an effort to prove that their house is haunted, Katie and Mika set up cameras all around their home to capture the demon they believe torments them in the first flick. What the hell? How come my face is scratched and yours isn't? Paranormal activity forces viewers to sit through extremely long pauses between uncomfortable scenarios, and it's remarkable how creative it gets with its insanely low budget. Basically, if you're someone who believes in the paranormal or already has an occasionally weird acting partner, this movie might hit a little too close to home for you. Still worth a viewing, in our opinion. In fact, I've got to get out of here. No, this no, thing is no, very no, aggravated. The fact that I'm here. here. Wait, wait, not... wait, everybody, calm down. We need your help. Number seven. Halloween. Say something. Say something, Michael. Admittedly, the Halloween franchise has seen more whiffs than hits, but when something like the 2018 sequel comes our way, it hits hard. This iteration of Halloween retcons everything that came after the original movie and explores how those events impacted Laurie Strode in her later years. As for Michael Myers himself, this is probably the most haunting depiction of the iconic killer we've seen since the first movie in 1978, adding to his enigmatic motives and shaping him, no pun intended, more to be the embodiment of evil. Few franchises get this amount of love and care, and it was this film that made people flock to see Halloween Kills in 2021, which was equally thrilling, if not more. Number 6. The Vigil People in the community that don't have any family and not friends. If you're looking for a more traditionally shot supernatural horror, well, The Vigil might keep you awake at night. 
When a member of his former Orthodox Jewish community passes away, Yaakov Ronan is tasked to keep watch over the deceased remains. It isn't long until he encounters the Mazik, an invisible demon that is believed to be a punishment from God in Jewish mythology. While the vigil does have some flaws in its scare tactics, it still manages to tell a haunting story with its fantastic lighting, writing and cast. And it all wraps up in a distressing bow. <laughs> Number five, Creep 2. Hey, welcome to Encounters. I'm Sarah. This is episode 10 of 10. And normally this is where I tell you that I'm going to go see John, a mid-level manager at Walgreens, and that we're going to work through his mommy issues through, I don't know, synchronized swimming or some shit. The first Creep movie from 2014 was already a wild and terrifying ride. Creep 2, on the other hand, somehow found a way to make its story even more intense. Our mysterious killer from the first movie returns with a new name and lures in a new victim, telling her that he will let her live for 24 hours so long as she agrees to make a documentary about him. Are you rolling, Sarah? Yeah. What follows is a different dynamic between killer and victim than we've seen in other horror movies, and it's one that remains grisly and gruesome to this day. Even if you aren't big on found footage horror, this is definitely a flick you have to see. Ta da! Oh, nope, 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 nope. It's yours. I snuck it out of your boot after I fell on you. Thought for sure you would have noticed that. Number four, the black phone. Are those black balloons in there? Would you like to see a magic trick? Slasher and Supernatural fans come forth because this one is a real home run. Based on the 2004 short story written by Joe Hill, the son of legendary horror author Stephen King, the black phone centers on a boy who is kidnapped by a notorious serial killer known as the Grabber. While captive, he comes across an enigmatic telephone that emits the voices of those who have succumbed to the Grabber. With Ethan Hawke's impeccable performance as the deranged killer and director Scott Derrickson's imaginative approach to the source material, The Black Phone will most likely go down as one of the best horror movies of the 2020s. I was really starting to like you, Finny. I almost let you go. Number three, Us. Before Us and one other film, Jordan Peele was primarily known for his comedy work. So who would have guessed that he could deliver something so disturbing? Us centers on a young woman and her family who find themselves being stalked by doppelgangers. The shadow hated the girl so much, but so long. Written and directed by Peel, Us is a powerful film until the very end, commenting on several subjects from 80s culture, classism, and American privilege, all while borrowing cues from various other horror films. Just give it one watch, and Us will stick with you for a long, long time. Number two, The Invisible Man. Oh my god, Sydney. Having escaped a toxic relationship, Cecilia Cass has finally found a way to slowly rebuild her life until she gets the feeling that someone might be following her. From start to finish, The Invisible Man constantly toys with your emotions about as much as its antagonist toys with Cecilia. Is she seeing things? Is this all in her head? Has the trauma caused her to conjure delusions? It all weaves into a brilliant story that gives us a look at the struggles victims of mistreatment face when trying to escape and move on. Before we reveal our top pick, here are a few honorable mentions. Sinister. Though it becomes tropey, it's still a fantastic flick in its own way. Ouija. 
origin of evil. Manages to right the wrongs of its predecessor as well as go above and beyond. Our father who art in heaven. He can't see this house, father. If he could, none of us would still be here. Happy Death Day, a unique and goofy concept, makes this a compelling horror comedy. Can you help me stop reliving the same day over and over, only to be murdered by someone I may or may not know? Thought so. Sweetheart, you'll have a new reason to fear the ocean after this. Freaky. Think Freaky Friday, but with a serial killer and teenager instead of a mum and daughter. What's the matter, Millie? You got what you wanted, right? You got your body back? Insidious, haunting with its otherworldly atmosphere. Before we continue, be sure to subscribe to our channel and ring the bell to get notified about our latest videos. You have the option to be notified for occasional videos or all of them. If you're on your phone, make sure you go into your settings and switch on notifications. Number one, get out. By the way, I, I would have voted for Obama for a third term if I could. Best president in my lifetime, hands down. Well, of course we weren't going to leave out Jordan Peele's directorial debut. Get Out tells the story of a black man who goes with his white girlfriend to meet her parents, whom he soon finds out harbor a dark agenda. Sink into the floor. Wait, 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 wait. Sink. Not only does Get Out blend a light amount of comedy within its horror, but it also provides a ton of commentary on racism and discrimination in the modern world. The film went on to receive several awards across various outlets, Peel himself becoming the first black winner for Best Original Screenplay at the 90th Academy Awards. Today, the actor and comedian has gone on to direct, write and produce in even more movies, including Us, Candyman and Black Klansman. Get out! Yo! No. Yo! Chill, man! Get out! Chill! Get out! Chill! Chill, man! Do you agree with our picks? Check out this other recent clip from WatchMojo, and be sure to subscribe and ring the bell to be notified about our latest videos.